Hey YouTube, Bob here. I want to welcome you to the first video in a new series in my Nintendo Unbox playlist in which I'm going to be unboxing the Nintendo DS family of consoles. I decided to do this now that Nintendo has officially declared the end of production of the Nintendo 3DS, which is going to be the last entry uh, in this series here, or one of the last entries here. There's actually quite a few pairs here that we're going to take a look at. Uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at the DS in DS Lite. And then in the second video of the series, we'll unbox the DSi and DSi XL. Then we'll move on to the 3DS and 3DS XL. And then a little bit of a regression on Nintendo's part, we're going to take a look at the 2DS and 2DS XL. And then finally, the new 3DS and the new 3DS XL. So I hope you're looking forward to this five-part series as much as I am. So uh, let's get into it. And as you can see right here, these are the three pillars. When Nintendo first announced the DS in 2004, well, the GameCube was floundering, but the, the Game Boy Advance was doing very, very well. I firmly believe that if it weren't for Nintendo's handheld systems, uh, they probably wouldn't be the company that they are today. And now that technology has allowed them to combine the two, the home console with the, um, with the handheld console in the form of the Switch, they're doing very, very well. And now that they've, able, uh, they've been able to achieve that, well, there's really no reason to keep a console line going alongside of a portable line uh, of systems, uh, which was the model that Nintendo had been following for years and years and years since the Game Boy debu uh, debuted in 1989. Uh, alongside the NES. So what they did back in 2004 when they released this brand new, innovative, and almost Virtual Boy level weird uh, console uh, was say this is our third pillar here. We're still going to have the GameCube, we're still going to have the Nintendo or the, the Game Boy Advance, don't worry about that, but we're introducing this new exciting product along uh, alongside those as well. And they kept saying third pillar, third pillar, meaning that Game Boy Advance is not going away. And I think they use that as kind of a safety net uh, in case the, the DS failed. And um, as you see here in the brochure, they put right on the cover here, touching is good. That was kind of their uh, their slogan or their motto for the launch of the original Nintendo DS in 2004. And you kind of have to remember the timing of this product was just before smartphones uh, became widely available and used. Um, the idea of a touchscreen definitely had been in existence for years, but to be used in gaming, you know, we, we have games on mobile platforms all the time now, uh, either with a stylus or, or with finger touch. Uh, but this concept of playing games on two different screens, one of which was touch sensitive with a stylus, was brand new and a little bit risky. Uh, and I said just a, a minute ago, uh, probably Virtual Boy level risky. Uh, so Nintendo themselves were unsure of this product, but as we know now with how it progressed, um, it took off and became a huge phenomenon. It came out at just the right time before cell phones became or not, uh, smartphones became widely available. Uh, if they tried to re uh, release this product alongside smartphones, it would probably not have fared nearly as well. But uh, let's take a little bit of a look at this uh, retail brochure here. I did a playlist several years ago about all my brochures, so I, I uh, uh, took a look at this one at that point as well. So I won't go through and read everything uh, to you as I did in that video. Just the first part here. It says, Nintendo puts the gaming revolution in your hands. Nintendo introduces the most exciting, revolutionary gaming system ever, the Nintendo DS. This portable gem brings to the marketplace the most functional, necessary piece of hardware for the 21st century. Alongside the traditional game screen, the inclusion of a touchscreen to the DS changes the way video games will be played. 
In addition to pressing buttons, gamers will use a stylus on the second screen and actually touch the game. As if a touch screen wasn't revolutionary enough, every Nintendo DS comes with built-in wireless communication. So this system, uh, aside from its aesthetic, which uh, we'll take a look at in the unboxing in just a moment here, really was revolutionary uh, with everything uh, that came packed in, in, in the system here. As far as, like they mentioned, its wireless capabilities and the touch screen, and even the graphics at the time were quite advanced. But um, let's get into the unboxing itself, because as you're going to see, I've always kind of said that uh, the original design of the Nintendo DS almost looked like a prototype, <laughs> like it wasn't quite finished yet. It didn't really have that uh, typical Nintendo fit and finish to it. So here it is, the launch version of the Nintendo DS that came with Metroid Prime Hunters included, or a demo that is. The actual game was still a ways off uh, in development, but um, uh, the Nintendo 64 didn't have uh, a Metroid game. Uh, Metroid Prime had come out for the GameCube and was a huge success, so I think they were trying to fill the void with Metroid and then kind of capitalize on the recent success they had had on the GameCube. Um, and let you know that you know the same quality and caliber of games are going to be coming to this brand new Nintendo system. But other than this little um, splash of color here with the Metroid Prime Hunters, it's really quite a monochromatic package. And I believe this came in two colors at launch. Kind of a cobalt blue and then the silver. This obviously is the silver version. So if we do just a little bit of a turnover here, see Nintendo DS... Got a couple of them here to try to uh, let you know, hey, you can play this wirelessly with friends, just like the Game Boy Link cable from several years ago. In the back, get ready to experience a totally new way to play video games. The Nintendo DS is a high-powered handheld video game system in a sleek, portable folding design loaded with innovative features to give you the ultimate gaming experience. Built-in wireless communication allows you to share specially designed games, chat, or play real-time multiplayer games. This all sounds, sounds so yeah, yeah, yeah nowadays, but uh, for gaming at that time, that actually was quite innovative. Two-screen design for multiple view gaming. Color LCD screens are wide format and backlit, and the lower touchscreen provides a revolutionary way of playing and controlling games. Use the stylus to type, navigate menus, and get instant game control. Fast dual processing power allows you to play impressive new 3D rendered Nintendo DS games and play all your favorite Game Boy Advance games in a single player mode. That was kind of a key feature here and kind of backing up that idea that this is the third pillar. They wanted to make this package as, tra as attractive as possible so they included that backwards compatibility with Game Boy Advance games. Draw, sketch, write, and send wireless messages with up to 16 other users with the built-in communication tool PictoChat. Also includes rechargeable battery pack, AC adapter, wrist strap, and extra stylus. So they really went all out with this. I think, like I said, Nintendo knew that this was kind of an interesting and risky product. So they really, you know, you know, uh, marketed its features very well with the backwards compatibility, the wireless play. And I really found it interesting here that they're calling this particular version of the DS sleek and portable. But they also did mention the folding design, which most people at this time in 2004, they had a folding flip phone. So as far as matching up with the technology that people already had, Nintendo was hoping that they would feel just as comfortable using something like the DS. So all games sold separately. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games. Not 14. You see uh, 14 uh, panels there, but remember they're showing Nintendo DS screens. So there's two of them for uh, each one there. So seven games, and that's actually quite a lot at launch for a typical Nintendo console. If you think back to something like the N64, where there were two first-party games, and that was it in the form of Super Mario 64 and Pilot Wayne 64. This is actually quite a robust uh, lineup of launch games. And then it also has a list of Coming Soon, WarioWare, Inc., Yoshi's Balloon Trip, Pokemon Dash, Asphalt Urban GT, 
Tiger Woods PGA Tour Robots Ping Pals. And then here it looks like these aren't all first party games. The first party games are Metroid Prime Hunters and Super Mario 64 DS. So they had quite a large launch window here. So if we turn around to the side, just a little bit more of that monochromatic design, which we're going to see um, continue in the form of the successor, which was the DS Lite. And the DS Lite came out after this because, well, this one was quite chunky. And like I said, I've always considered almost like a prototype design because it certainly does not have that typical Nintendo aesthetic. So let's get this thing open and see what a consumer would have enjoyed uh, right out of the box here. So this is back when Nintendo was using those big uh, clear circle stickers to seal things. So all these things that I unbox, um, they've already been opened, but I rebox them especially for you. And um, uh, I don't throw anything away because uh, that's just the way I am. So it's quite easy to, uh, to repackage these things. So there's where you um, open up the seal there. And right away you're confronted with that AC adapter, which not at this point yet, but we would find out later on this is going to be quite special. Uh, it became quite a point of contention when the new 3DS stopped including an AC adapter in the box. And that's a good thing, you know, it's a little bit of an inconvenient thing too, but as far as uh, ecology is concerned and caring for the environment, a lot of people already had AC adapters for their 3DS and Nintendo made it backwards compatible with their new 3DS. But this was brand new, so you definitely needed an AC adapter. So this is it. You can see it's got quite a chunky plug here. Proprietary, as is pretty typical with Nintendo. But what's nice about these is that the... Um, let me get out of the bag here. I think that'll be more helpful. There we go. So you can see the plug there. It's proprietary. And the nice thing that I've enjoyed about these AC adapters over the years is Nintendo makes it so that the, uh, the prongs swivel in and out of the unit for easy storage if you want to put this in a travel case. It makes it very portable. So there's the AC adapter. And then if we take a look beyond that little compartment here, looks like we see the paperwork there and the Metroid Prime Hunters demo. So we'll take a look at that first. Let's see if I can get that just those items out of here. Here they come. Looks like we've got everything in a bag here, sealed with tape. Let's take a look at Metroid Prime Hunters First Hunt Demo Edition first. This obviously isn't a standard plastic Nintendo DS case. Uh, they wanted to fit this in. And in North America, it seems to be a North American trend as far as Nintendo was concerned. I remember with Wii, uh, Wii Sports didn't come in a proper plastic clamshell case. Uh, where in other regions it did. But uh, since this is just a demo, it probably didn't warrant that in the first place. But you get your game card here in another little plastic sleeve, and then you get the instruction manual. Take a little bit of a look through that. Metroid Prime Hunters First Hunt demo version. But in typical Nintendo fashion, still full color tells you everything you need to know about the controls and in multiple languages too, which is something we're going to see um, get further and further less of the way Nintendo operated as we go along through the DS uh, family here, uh, as far as including um, very comprehensive and um, thorough color paperwork. But that was still included here with Metroid Prime Hunter's demo. Now, as soon as I say that, I'm actually going to contradict myself a little bit here as we take a look at the instruction manual for the Nintendo DS, which I just got done talking about how Nintendo typically made their manuals full color, very comprehensive in different languages. But if we take a look at this, it's almost boring. <laughs> to be honest, it's very boring. It's all just black and white. No color whatsoever. 
and I think that kind of goes along perfectly with what I mentioned before about Nintendo being kind of, uh, maybe this is going to work out, maybe this isn't going to work out. Um, so the instruction manual isn't quite as, um, they didn't put quite as much, you know, effort in regards to the color is concerned, but it is still just as comprehensive in regards to how many languages uh, that are included here. We got the typical English, French, and Spanish. So there's a lot here. It's not all that interesting, but it does it does have the instructions for the uh, the wrist strap, which was this was the only model of the DS that included the wrist strap, and I actually liked it. You can see here it was more than just like a carrying device. It has this little plastic pad on it, and just like you saw in the diagram there, you pull the slider down a little bit, and then as it's attached to your your system you can actually put your thumb in it and tighten it around your thumb and then use it as kind of a stylus. So if you touch this plastic piece to the screen, it'll function just as a stylus would. So kind of an interesting alternative way to play. And speaking of the stylus, they actually give you an extra one. Because, yeah, this is really small. That's one of the um, complaints about the original DS is the stylus um, wasn't very robust and, you know, it was a little bit hard to work with um, as far as an adult hand was concerned. And what was interesting about the DS, just like the Game Boy, this was heavily marketed towards adults, especially once the blockbuster game Brain Age was released. They realized that, okay, adults are buying this. You know, it's kind of like our Game Boy was, marketed for that adult business person on a plane who wants to play Tetris or in this case Brain Age we're gonna have to make a little bit more of a robust stylus for um, for those people and plus um, you know kids they lose stuff like this so good on Nintendo for including an extra one so you got the stylus got the wrist strap with the little thumb pad the instruction manual that's kind of blah if you compare it to other instruction manuals here is your Nintendo power subscription Oh, Nintendo Power. This was back even when Nintendo was publishing it on their own before they passed it off to uh, Future Future pub, uh, Publishing. You could even get a Nintendo DS t-shirt. You can see the popular games at the time on GameCube. Pikmin 2, Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door, Legend of Zelda, Four Swords Adventures. So, got your Nintendo Power subscription. The obligatory health and safety precautions booklet, which, yeah. <laughs> and then, what do we got here? Register your Nintendo DS for a chance to win. Oh, what could you win? Let's find out. If you send in this registration card, your name will be entered for a drawing for a chance to win a Nintendo published DS game of your choice. You can also sign up online. HTTP www.nintendo.com product reg or reg. This is not for warranty registration. Warranty is automatically registered when you purchase. So, a first party game of your choice. Well, I bet that website, um, well, it may work because I think you still register your products. If you want to go ahead and type that in, nintendo.com slash product reg or reg, see if it still works. Does it tell you what the games are? Download, nope, nope, nope. You gotta go to the website to find out. But you know what? All over and done with. But for those of you who did that, you got your game to play on your brand new DS, which looked like this. Let's see if we can get it out of its little, its little compartment here. A little cardboard flap. Open that up. And let gravity do its work. There's the original Nintendo DS in all of its bulky, chunky glory. One thing I always enjoyed is that they had the little piece of foam here to kind of separate the two screens. You see that with new laptops nowadays. But before we open it up, let's take a look at the side here. This is where you would put your game card in. This is the port for the proprietary AC adapter. And here's the holes where you would put your wrist strap right in there. You can see how it's curved. I typically do have it attached there. Let's see if I can get that on. All right, there we go. Got that on there. Get it over the plastic piece. Tighten it up. 
And there we go. Wrist strap is on. Let's see if I can demo how to use that thumb piece once we once we open up the console here. But uh, just like the Game Boy Advance before it, it's got the L and R buttons continuing on in that tradition. And on the back here, you see where the little stylus storage compartment is. Same stylus that they gave you an extra of, which was really nice, although it's a little bit on the small side. Nintendo would rectify that later on uh, with the DS Lite. And then they'd really rectify that situation with the Nintendo DSi XL, but we'll get to that in another video. So take along to the front here. Got your volume slider and then headphone with the proprietary little, oh gosh, what is that for? Can't even remember. Maybe one of you guys remembers. You can put it in the comments. There's another little connection, I guess, for a special type of headset, perhaps with a microphone. Let me actually, if I look at the plastic here, yep, that's precisely what that's for. There's a little um, a picture of a headset with a microphone on there. So Nintendo, I'm sure, sold that microphone and, um, and you could use that online. Or for games such as, I think, uh, Nintendo Nintendogs required uh, the microphone. And then hiding here under the uh, piece of foam, this is the slot for the Game Boy Advance games. Because like we read, this has backwards compatibility with those. The nice thing about the DS, the original version, unlike the DS Lite, is that the games... Um, uh, we're flush with the edge of the console here. With the DS Lite, they kind of stick out a little bit, but um, they still retain that backwards compatibility with the uh, the Game Boy Advance with the DS Lite. So let's open up the clamshell here. And there it is. The original Nintendo DS. Got your stereo speakers. The top screen was not touch. A little bit brighter, I thought. I think the um, the special touch panels for the bottom screen here, they did something to mute the backlight a little bit, um, and I didn't care for it. It always looked a little bit dingier than the top screen, but uh, these um, the backlight here was never known for being very good, which was one of the main upgrades and improvements with the DS Lite that we'll take a look at next. But um, you got a power button here that is, oddly enough, a power button that you actually touch. You have to hold it down for a second or two to get it to turn on or off. I think this is the only time in a Nintendo handheld where there was a button for the power. It's always been a switch with the Game Boy, the Game Boy Advance, and then all the other iterations of the, um, of the DS, they had a switch or a slider to turn the power on and off. And I think the main complaint, if you think about it, it's very logical. You got your thumb moving around here. If you were to accidentally hit the power button, whoops, there goes your game. Although I think you have to hold it down for a significant period of time. It probably wasn't all that common of an issue. But with all future iterations, they went back to the slider on the side of the console rather than the button on the top for power. And the other thing that I think is really weird is this is one of the most unique D-pads that Nintendo has ever made. It's not like any other home console or handheld that they've made before. Um, uh, it's also very um, kind of shallow. The other D-pads that they've made on the 3DS and even the DS Lite right after this are a lot mushier. But this one doesn't have a lot of give to it. It's quite shallow. And it doesn't really have the arrows on it, the little lines that we're going to see in a lot of the other iterations for the 3DS and, and the DS Lite. The select and start buttons here. And then, oh gosh, these buttons, they aren't very rounded. They actually have kind of, they aren't square shape, but they're kind of like a, a, a 90 degree angle edge right here all the way around. And they're, they just, these buttons are so shallow, they just do not feel like any other Nintendo console which, I don't know, just gives further credence to my idea that uh, this is more of a prototype model and Nintendo is just kind of pushing it out there to see what the reception would be. And the reception was overwhelmingly positive, especially once Brain Age came out and uh, New Super Mario Brothers came out. That blew the gates off this thing. This thing became so, so, so very popular. And then Nintendo realized, all right, we have to improve the screens, we have to improve the stylus, we have to improve the buttons, and that's precisely what they did. So we're going to take a look at that now in the Nintendo DS Lite. And there it is. There's the Nintendo DS Lite. 
the 2006 follow-up to the original DS which released in 2004. We got a very similar logo here, Nintendo DS, and they added light. And one thing that I didn't mention with the original Nintendo DS uh, was the logo they chose. So, got it here again, Nintendo DS, and what you notice is they use that O at the bottom. They kind of duplicate it to replicate uh, the dual screens. And you see that's kind of a, um, an aesthetic motif that they're using here throughout the DS Lite as well as that dual screen. Very classy looking. I've always enjoyed that. It's even embossed on the plastic there. But um, in regards to the name as well, um, DS, I've heard of two uh, explanations for that name. Could mean dual screen, obviously referring to the two screens right there. I've also heard that it could mean developer system. And I think uh, one of Nintendo's main goals was, especially after um, how difficult it was to program for the N64, with the GameCube and the Game Boy Advance and now the DS, they wanted to be sure that developers um, were able to understand the development kits and be able to make games very easily. So DS could also mean developer's system. So if we turn the box around, we see we just got the logo there. Then on the side here, it's printed, along with that circle sticker. Then on this side, you got just the, the elegant dual screens. So it says, Experience Nintendo DS Lite. The Nintendo DS Lite is a high-powered handheld video game system in a sleek folding design loaded with features for a unique gaming experience. And yes, now I finally do agree that it is sleek unlike uh, its chunky older brother, the DS. The color screens are now even brighter, and the lower touchscreen provides a totally new way of playing and controlling games. Use the built-in wireless mode to share games, chat, or even play multiplayer games online via Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. Play impressive 3D rendered Nintendo DS games, and play all of your favorite, uh, favorite Game Boy Advance games in single player mode. So it's talking about the backwards compatibility, the online functionality, the microphone, all of that came over from the original DS, but now in a smaller, more compact package with brighter screens and a better stylus. So all in all, a much, much welcome improvement. And you can see here that unlike the original Nintendo DS box, they're not talking about any games. And I think that's because at this point, everybody wanted this thing. They already knew they wanted to play Brain Age. They already knew they wanted to play New Super Mario Brothers, but they wanted to play it on, a, on better technology. And that's precisely what the Nintendo DS Lite was meant to be. So let's take a look at it. Already opened the, uh, the sticker here when I, first, uh, when I first got this. So we pop this one open, pull back the flap, and we've got a charger. Now I think at this point Nintendo stopped using the charger that they were using for the original DS which I believe was also backwards compatible with the Game Boy Advance. Um, and one nice thing that they did is they made the um, the adapter a lot smaller to go along with um, pretty much shrinking down everything else as far as the uh, the dimensions of this console. So I got the AC adapter there and then we'll take a look at the documentation. Let's see if any improvements have been made as far as color goes. There we go. Again, we got the extra stylus. And nope, not this time around. It looks like the Nintendo DS Lite manual is still monochromatic, all black and white, but still in three languages. And Still quite comprehensive as far as including multiple languages and explaining in depth how to use the different functionality, both the software and the hardware. So there's the manual. Looks like we got another subscription for Nintendo Power. By this time, it looks like it's being published by Future. Remember, this wasn't a launch model, though, so maybe back in 2006 when this, um, when this did launch, uh, you got a little bit of a different version of the uh, Nintendo Power subscription card. And then at this time, the Nintendo Club was flying high. Club Nintendo, where you could uh, register your products and get points to redeem uh, rewards. 
Registra, uh, registrate ahora. Register now. So yeah, it's telling you to register your code, which I already did years and years and years ago. Plus, Club Nintendo is no longer doing things like that. So sorry, code's no good for lots of different reasons. There's our extra stylus. We'll just leave that in there. We'll take a look at the stylus when we look at the system. Ah, interesting here. Picto Chat gets its own manual with the uh, with the DS Lite. With the original DS, we got the manual here still. I think they address Picto Chat in the DS manual. Yeah, there it is. Chapter 11, pages 16 and 17 talks about Picto Chat. But here it's got. Uh, its own instruction booklet, which is in color, or at least the cover is. Nope, the whole thing is in color. Yeah. I wonder if this was in response to the criticisms uh, that uh, was levied against PictoChat. I read years and years and years ago. I don't remember the details about it now, but um, PictoChat um, functioned with the wireless communication where, you know, if you're in the vicinity of somebody else who has a DS or DS Lite, you can communicate with each other, you know, and type things and draw things and share it with anybody else who has a DS. Well, rightly and naturally so, parents were concerned, you know, anybody in a park, you know, who had a DS, you know, where there's kids could be... Um, you know, sending things. So that was uh, a big, a big, big concern, I think. So what's PictoChat? PictoChat allows you to send and receive wireless messages and drawings easily and from up to 15 other DS users. It's built into the Nintendo DS system, so all you have to do is turn the power on and you're ready to go. So, yeah. Although, however, I'm not seeing anything about that issue. Maybe it was at the beginning. Privacy. PictoChat is not an internet application. However, when using PictoChat, you can communicate with up to 15 users within wide range, 65 feet. Users will be able to see your nickname and messages to protect your privacy. Okay, do not give out personal information such as last name, phone number, age, email, or home address when communicating with others. An adult should assist children with the system setup and instruct them not to use per, uh, personal information. Children should be warned about communicating with or meeting strangers. So, yeah, there it is. I think that's... I think they wanted to make that a little bit more obvious, so they addressed PictoChat a little bit more in a separate fashion than with the original DS. Especially since it became so popular. I don't know that Nintendo was counting on the DS and PictoChat becoming so widely used, but uh, it certainly did. And then that, that privacy and security issue came up. So again, yeah, health and safety precautions. So let's take a look at the Nintendo DS Lite itself. Let's see, where does it reside? Oh, it's deep in there. Okay, let's see. Let's see if I can do this without having to make a cut. Nope, oh, gravity's helping me out here. Real easy. So we've gone to a little bit of a foam bag now instead of a plastic bag. But we take it out here. And, oh, wow, this thing is just like a big bar of soap. So smooth and rounded, very aesthetically appealing, and so compact as well. As a matter of fact, let's compare it to its bigger brother, or, yeah, its older brother here. Here we go. Here's the Nintendo DS. Oh, yeah, and something I forgot to do. We'll do this now. Open it up here. Got the, um, the wrist strap hooked on here, so I think what you're supposed to do is put this on your thumb, tighten it up a little bit so that it's like that, and then I think there's just enough, you know, slack here where you can use it to use your thumb to activate the touch screen. So there's that. And I think the DS Lite also has a uh, lanyard hook like the DS does, but they didn't include a lanyard or strap. Yep, there it is there is the, the holes to uh, loop your lanyard uh, strap around. But I don't think Nintendo ever provided one with the DS Lite. As we can see here, maybe not so much a difference in size is, uh, in, 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 outside of the thickness here. And especially if you take a look at the... Um, <laughs> almost looks like a spaceship. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Flight of the Navigator, but it kind of reminds me of that, the way it kind of just arcs up and goes down. It's just very chunky and blocky and bulky and even got some, not sharp edges, but definitely not smooth edges right here. If we 
we take a look at the difference, yeah, I think that's the main difference between the two, is the thickness right there. And if we put them back to back, yeah, considerably different. So lots of improvements all the way around, but the most significant and welcome one was the screens, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. So we've got cartridge slot, AC adapter port, lanyard hooks, L and R buttons still. And instead of being on the top, oh yeah, that was another complaint too, is uh, people found it awkward to have to reach around the top of the DSI system because the stylus is back here. It's, it's kind of hidden. You can't see it. It's right here. So if you wanted, you had to, you know, kind of blindly feel around and kind of pull the stylus out there or you actually had to turn it over and kind of get it uh, from the back. So Nintendo took that feedback into account and decided to put it now on the side. But of course, as always, favoring right-handed people. Um, I'm a right-handed person myself, so it's always um, very convenient for me the way the world is set up, but I'm married to someone who is left-handed, <laughs> and I always hear complaints about, oh, the world is set up for right-handed people, and yeah, I, I, I don't disagree with that. I feel for left-handed people, but uh, it's on the right-hand side here, along with the power slider, which is now a slider. It's not a button anymore. Uh, it's out of the way of your left thumb. You don't have any issues with turning your uh, system off accidentally while you're using the D-pad. But uh, you just have to hold it on, uh, you know, move it up briefly, you know, for it to turn on or off. Then we move around to this side. We got that same uh, headphone jack along with the connector for the microphone. And then the volume slider, too. This is pretty much in the same spot as the original DS didn't change too much there with those things. Something that is very different though is the cartridge slot cover for the Game Boy Advance. Kind of a, not a jumper pack like the N64, but just kind of a placeholder here, you know, to keep it closed. Because this goes around with people places. It had a lot more chance of getting dirty or broken, you know, things put in it as it's being carried around than a console that has a, a cartridge slot. So they included this to kind of keep it covered and protected. The one drawback about this DS Lite over the original DS is due to its smaller size. The Game Boy Advance cartridges did kind of stick out about, I don't know, a half an inch maybe, a half an inch here. But, you know, if you're holding it like this and the cartridge is sticking out down here, it's really not that big a deal. So it looks like we're about ready to open it up. Let me get the cartridge slot cover back in there. And voila. There we go. No piece of foam separating the two screens this time, but that's okay. Still got the stereo speakers and the much improved brightness on the screen. Kind of like the difference of the original um, Game Boy Advance SP to the Game Boy Advance SP Plus or AGS 101. More of a, um, a proper backlit screen. Super bright. But now we got the more standard Nintendo D-pad, which is more mushy and a lot less clicky. Let's see if this one clicks. I'm sh kind of clicks. Yeah, it's not clicky, but it just does not have the same feel. These buttons are shallow and sharp, whereas these buttons here are more rounded and mushy. Um, and this D-pad here is something that Nintendo used for quite a while. They used it for the Wii, um, and they used it throughout pretty much the entire Nintendo DS and 3DS lifespan, where they have these little lines on each... Uh, each end of the d-pad here but these buttons have a lot more give to them they're rounded and more comfortable I remember reading that people thought the start and select buttons were harder to push and these actually are quite clicky the start and select buttons but um, overall quite a bit more comfortable than um, than uh, the DS but something that um, I've never really appreciated on Nintendo handhelds is, you know, they're designed for kids. I get that. You know, when I was growing up, I had a Game Boy, which oddly enough, the Game Boy to me is the most comfortable of Nintendo handhelds because of its size. And the buttons on the Game Boy are pretty much the same size as a, uh, an NES controller. But, you know, an adult, 
you could put your thumb over all four of these buttons and push them. It's just, they're so close together and so small. I even have that same issue with the Switch nowadays. The buttons on the Joy-Con, they're just so cramped and small. I've never really enjoyed playing games on a handheld as much as I have on a console with a proper controller. But everybody's mileage on that differs, so it's just a personal preference. But Nintendo handhelds have always seemed to me to be a little bit more toy-like. They don't really have that you know high-end electronics fit and finish to them like um, Sony's uh, PSP and Vita did those always you know they had really robust buttons not these plasticky teeny tiny things but uh, that's just the way it goes uh, you get used to it um, when I get really really older you know start having arthritis in my fingers I probably won't be able to, to manage this anymore but um, for now and when I was playing these consoles it was a blast so I hope that you enjoyed this first entry into uh, the new series of Nintendo Unboxed. In the second of the five videos, next time we're going to be taking a look at the Nintendo DSi and DSi XL. Just kind of an iterative, you know, kind of middle step in between the DS and the 3DS. But like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video, and um, until next time, take care. Bye-bye.